In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, since last video was about something besides orthodoxy, this video will be about something unorthodoxy. Today, I'm going to review the Orthodox Study Bible. So, um, this is the, my primary Bible that I use. Uh, I think uh, every English-speaking Orthodox Christian should have this Bible. It has um, the full Orthodox canon in it, because it's, it's the Old Testament based on the Septuagint. So you're getting all the books. Uh, the New Testament is the New King James Version, translated from Received Text, so it's pretty close to the text that the Church has preserved for its New Testament text. And it also has footnotes letting you know where the Received Text differs from the Critical Text and the uh, Majority Text, so that's nice. Um, lots of useful helps, a uh, patristic commentary in the footnotes. So you can see the footnotes at the bottom, very nice. Um, and since it's Orthodox Bible, it has a full color of icons. Uh, let's see, uh, oh, here's the day's Pentecost, so um, I'll show you the Pentecost icon. See? Lots of uh, great helps in the uh, beginning and end of the book. So there's uh, some introductory articles, which are very nice, and uh, lots of great stuff at the end. I particularly like the article by Metropolitan Kalisos about how to read the Bible. Uh, there's a glossary, morning and evening prayers, very nice. Full color mass from the from Thomas Nelson, the same maps you get with any of their study Bibles. They're very nice, very well done. Um, has, has a very last page to let you know about the 70 apostles. Um, it's very well done. I'm really happy with it. I have some minor criticisms about it. These are pretty nitpicky, but uh, I'm going to list them anyway. Because um, as good as it is, it's not perfect. Now, don't don't freak out. I don't mean that the words of the Bible aren't perfect. I believe they're inspired by God they're in and everything else. I don't mean that. What I mean by it's not a perfect Bible is that it doesn't have everything that everyone wants to satisfy their needs. So that's what I mean when I say it's not a perfect Bible. I don't think there can be a perfect Bible. Okay. So again, these are very minor nitpicky things, but here they are anyway. Um, first criticism isn't really with the Orthodox Study Bible itself, but right with the New King James Version translation. Um, in Acts, they translate the Greek gods as Zeus, Hermes, and Diana. Diana is the Roman name. I, I want consistency. If you're going to go with Roman names, to make it Jupiter, Mercury, and Diana. If you're going to have Zeus and Hermes, make her Artemis. I would lean towards the latter because we're translating from Greek manuscripts, so use the Greek names. <laughs> okay, second one. The, because, again, this is uh, from Thomas Nelson, so you'll get the maps they include in other study Bibles which includes this map of um, Jesus' ministry. You'll see here on number 9, it says Mount Hermon was the site of the Transfiguration. Well, if you're Orthodox and you've been to liturgy during Holy Transfiguration, then you know the second antiphon says, Save us, O Son of God, who are transfigured in glory on Mount Tabor. And you remember when we uh, did the video on the councils of the Hesychast controversy, it was about seeing the uncreated light the disciples saw on Mount Tabor, the Tabor light. So um, that's something I would like to see fixed. Um, additionally, what might be nice is to have an appendix with the 4th Maccabees and probably 2nd Esdras too. I believe 2nd Esdras is included in the Russian Orthodox appendix. So uh, including those would be nice. Also including the verses that are in the Masoretic text of Jeremiah that aren't in the Septuagint. Because again, this being an Orthodox study Bible, the Old Testament is mostly t taken from the Septuagint because that's the what the Church has used throughout its history. Now, it doesn't always follow the Septuagint. There are places where it follows the Masoretic text or the Septuagint, probably in places where they thought it was more accurate than Septuagint. So it's not it's not a pure translation of the Septuagint. They do deviate from it when they feel they need to. So yeah, in fact, with, with that would be a uh, nice to have. Also, minor things like there are a few typographical errors. You know, books have those, so fixing those. Um, fixing the list of saints at the front it has a, a couple errors in that list of saints. 
Um, I'd like to see the lectionary fixed up a little bit, especially with regards to um, the Great Feast. I'd like to see uh, all the Old Testament Vespers readings added to those. That would be nice to have. The, the lectionary could be uh, cleaned up a little bit and improved upon. Um, the Book of Psalms. Very nice translation, but since it's an Orthodox study Bible, they really could have um, added in headers denoting where the Cathismata and Stasis begin and end so that it could be used liturgically or in personal use if you want to pray the Psalter the way the church does. That wouldn't take up that much space. I don't know why they didn't do it. I guess they just didn't think about it. But yeah, having the Book of Psalms divided up liturgically so that it could be used in church or if you want to follow the way the church does it be a great improvement. It would also be nice if you, they had somewhere in here a table for reading the Psalter throughout the year, the way the church reads the Psalter throughout the year, so you could follow it. And also a list of the nine biblical olds that are used at Matins. That would be nice to have. Um, I'd like to see a, a list of ecumenical councils with brief overviews. That would be nice so that you could see the church's theology through the Bible and see the councils in light of the Bible and see the biblical basis for all their decisions and everything. Um, oh, this might, this is probably really a bit too ambitious, but I'd like to see it anyway, but it might add too much space and require a separate volume. But um, a list of variations between the Septuagint, Masoretic Text, and Dead Sea Scrolls. I know the Eastern Orthodox Bible, when they released their Old Testament, they were going to do that, but um. That product seems to have fallen through. I mean, their website's not even up anymore, so I don't think we're ever going to see the Eastern Orthodox Bible's Old Testament, unfortunately, because uh, that sounds like that really would have been the Old Testament for Orthodox Christians to have, but I, unfortunately, doesn't like that's ever going to see the light of day. I know there are New Testaments available, and from what I've read of it, it's pretty good. It has some helpful articles and everything, but again, it's only the New Testament, so if you want a whole Bible, you'll have to find another Old Testament. Okay, and also because because it's translated from the Septuagint, they use the verse numberings mostly following the New English translation of the Septuagint, and that can be difficult when you're citing stuff because pretty much every other English Bible follows is translated from the Masoretic text, their Old Testament, so um, the verse numberings aren't always going to match up. So it would have been nice to have um, the Masoretic text versus in parentheses. Or just have used the Masoretic verses to begin with, other than, you know, maybe in the Psalms. Use that the Orthodox way and have the Masoretic text in parentheses. But the rest of the Old Testament maybe numbered according to the Masoretic text. Even in Jeremiah, where it would, it would look like the chapters would be out of order because the Septuagint and Masoretic text are arranged differently. I don't know. Again, these are minor nitpicky details. Overall, the Orthodox study Bible is solid. You should really get it. Um, I know there are people who prefer um, Jacobian English for their Bibles, so maybe it would be nice if they, if they would release um, a KJV version, perhaps with uh, for KJV New Testament or a Third Millennium New, New Testament, and then they're, for the Old Testament use a Breton's translation of the Septuagint. I don't know, something to think about. Um, a traditional English Orthodox study Bible might be nice for people to have. Um... But other than that, yeah, really saw lots of good stuff. Um, I know Ancient Face New Version, they included um, pre- and post-communion prayers in there, so if you get the version from Ancient Face, you're getting even more, which is real nice. So yeah, um, I highly recommend the Orthodox Study Bible. Um, every English-speaking Orthodox Christian should have this and uh, use it regularly. Solid, uh, solid work here. Okay, see you guys next time. O oh Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel.